Hey y'all, hi. I am doing this thing today. I'm wearing a necklace on top of my turtleneck sweater. I feel like just a couple months ago, I would have thought that this looked dumb, but now everybody's doing it. And so suddenly I feel like it looks great, <laughs> but this is the first time I'm doing it. What do you think? I feel like it does add a little je ne sais quoi. Anyway, I have all this makeup here that has come to me through a variety of channels. Some of it was sent to me in PR. Some of it was given to me by my friend Becca Sun, who has a beautiful YouTube channel and Instagram account, and I'll link them down below. I strongly recommend going and checking Becca out. Thinking about how I was going to incorporate all of this makeup into YouTube videos was kind of boggling my mind over here. A lot of it is stuff that I don't particularly want to do like a dedicated review video of it. And there's a lot of other stuff in the works right now on my channel. So I was just like, how am I going to talk, talk about it all? Because it's in, it's exciting and I want to get it on, on camera, but I was like, but how? And then it occurred to me that there's this just classic genre of YouTube video, trying new makeup, where you just put makeup on your face that's new to you and talk about it. And so that's what we're doing today. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm glad you're here. My name is Hannah. I really love beautiful things. I love makeup. It's gonna be a party today. But I feel like in the beauty community, sometimes it feels like loving makeup goes hand in hand with spending a ton of money on makeup and consequently acquiring like a whole bunch of makeup. I don't wanna overspend on makeup and I don't wanna encourage you guys to overspend on it either. So while I review things, while I do process a lot of PR on my channel and talk about whether I like it or not, I always try to apply a critical thinking lens so that I can give you the tea about the makeup but without normalizing overspending or encouraging overspending. And if that sounds good to you, I hope that you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I can't tell whether my brows are okay today. I did the first part of this look, which was just uh, base, like skin prep base, and also totally snatching my hair back in this extremely slick situation, which I almost never do, but I had to do it today because of the state that my hair was in. Anyway, everything that you see up until now, I actually did this on camera in a Patreon video. It was like a, a chatty Patreon video where I talked about all the cats I've ever owned in my life and got myself ready to film this video. And because I was talking about all the cats I've ever owned in my life, I was not paying attention when I did my brows. I was like really focused on talking about all the cats and not very focused on my brows. So I struggled with them a little bit and they're totally on show because my bangs are gone. But this is it, this is just how they're gonna be. I just want you to know that it's not as though I feel like these are the best brows I've ever done. This is just the way that they came out today. And I'm saying that because I'm about to zoom you in a little bit so you can start putting on the makeup. Speaking of being snatched, I feel like what we're doing is something very orange. I kind of wanna go with this situation here and I just feel like all of this hairless surface area <laughs> that my face has now become is appropriate to something a little bit editorial. So I might be kind of looking for oranges and reds. And there are some in this Berlin collection from Lethal, very interesting. I just feel like this is a very interesting color story. And it has these warms, and I guess it has this kind of like marigold orange down here. You might be able to do something like what I'm envisioning. And also they sent me these liners and some of these are very beautiful. I feel like th this, no, this is kind of the color that I'm thinking I want to base the look in. Kind of like a rusty, like a rusty shade. Lethal also sent these. These are part of the collection as well, and they're wild. They're the liquid eye shadows. I am particularly entranced by the silver one because it looks like it could easily be sheared out and just be all over the lid and make the lid look wet. I'm very tempted to just put that all over my lid and call it a day, but I think I wanna do more than that today. That is pretty much what I have on offer for eyes. So I'm gonna prime my eyes and then I'm just gonna start doing something. Unfortunately, a lawnmower has just started up like really close to here. So I'm just gonna get going on the eyes and then once I'm partway through, I'll check in with you about what I decided to do and what I'm doing. Okay, the lawnmower stopped, so I'm taking the opportunity to check in. There is this intense multi-chrome in this palette, and I just had to put it on my eyes. I just had to see how it was gonna look. So I'll, already, I'm 
not doing what I said I was gonna do, which was, I thought I was gonna try to put like rusty red orange all over my face in every place on my face. But instead I started in with this and it's performing pretty well. It's, I mean, the flip is there and the application is there. It's not as flaky and intense a multi-chrome as the one from Cleona. And I have a Cleona shade that looks almost exactly like this. I think it's Forge, but it's definitely, holding its own. I mean, it's definitely good. If you don't have any multi-chromes and you've always wanted one and you're drawn to this palette in other ways as well, it might be a way to like acquire your full first multi-chromes that you can play with it. I love Lethal's mattes. I just, it's like they work so well. It's so easy to get them to blend. It's so easy to get it to be symmetrical and even because they really just do exactly what you want them to. It's like it's made the use of mattes make more sense to me because I usually don't like working with them. I find that most mattes, I struggle with them. They're dusty. They're not as creamy as metallics. They don't blend as easily. They don't do what I want them to. And these, they just, they do do what I want them to. And so I feel like I'm able to get these more classic eye looks more easily. And so I end up doing stuff like this more. So this is just a combination of Breakthrough, which is the multi-chrome, and THF, which is this somewhat warm brown that is being made even more warm, I think, because it's sort of blending with some of the colors in the multi-chrome as I blend it out. I'm gonna put a little bit of the brown on my lower lash line, but I ended up with kind of a simple look today because I really like how this is looking right now. That is looking kind of editorial, right? I mean, especially without mascara and stuff on it. But I feel like it's, it's not exactly what I thought I was gonna do, but it's still, vibing. And I am going to resist the urge to put like a whole bunch of sparkly topper on top of it, which is what I usually do. Should I try to use the liner? I never use liners. This is, by the way, a palette inspired by the fall of the Berlin Wall. It's like Berlin 89. It's history, girls. It's like history makeup. I feel like I have to do it just because just because. I feel like I have to do it just because this is what we're trying new makeup. I never do I never do wings. I never do eyeliner like this, but it's just what we're gonna do. I think I'm probably gonna, it's gonna make me like the look less than I like it now, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for science. I'm just gonna use this little angle brush. Oh, it's very creamy. Oh, it's very soft and sort of melty. It's making me feel like it's gonna be easier than I was worried that it's gonna be. I might not do a big wing or indeed much of a wing at all, but I'm gonna do something. Who even am I right now? I, I am <sighs> shook. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of this in my waterline. Can we do that? All right, the, the time has come for me to stop gazing at myself in the mirror and apply mascara. And I am, wait, but I need to talk about what just happened. Okay, first of all, <laughs> First of all, the eyeshadow, I mean, everything went beautifully. I was surprised. It, it's a little bit of, it's this kind of color story that's like, it has, there's something I do love about it, which is there's a lot of grunge, right? Like I love that it's got these black, it's got a black and a brown, which I really love. I like the tone of the black. I mean, I like the tone of the brown. It's got a gray, it's got this sort of grungy mustard. So there's, and it's got this shiny uh, silvery shade in here. It's actually not that shiny. Oh, oh, it's like a, it's like a grungy multi sort of, sort of multi, it's almost like a gray pink flip kind of thing. That's also very grungy. So it's got all this grungy stuff going on, but then it's also got primary colors <laughs> and I'm just not like a primary colors kind of B over here. And the mix of the grungy and the primary colors isn't the effect that I love. But in practice, I really liked the way that it worked for me. Like there was an immediately a shadow in here that I wanted to put all over my lids. And then there was immediately a shadow that I wanted to blend it out with. And I really love the way that those two look together, the multi-chrome and the brown. And I have a feeling that that actually might continue to be true of this palette. I could see myself creating a lot of really great one, two, and three shadow looks with it, even though I don't particularly love the way all of the shadows look all of them together in one palette. So it actually surprised me with how much 
I liked using it. And then the huge shock was this eyeliner. Like I, this is like the third wing I've done in as many years, if not like five years. It was really, really easy to do. I used this shade input. It was really, really easy to do. And I actually really love the result. Maybe I'm doing wings now. Maybe I'm doing wings when I do my makeup. Although it might be one of those things where I like the way that it looks in person, but then when I see the footage back, I'm like, this is why you should never do wings <laughs> because they don't look good on your hooded eyes. But in this moment, I'm living, okay? So let's just let me have it for a little while. I don't have a new mascara to test, but even if I did, I would still be using the e.l.f. one because it's everything to me right now. I just really love it. I, I can't get over it. And yeah, you can see what it did to the look, like those gunky, spiky, spidery lashes. I'm like, am I Katie Jane Hughes? I'm like, am I Mariah Leonard? That's how I feel right now. Mariah, is that you? Katie Jane, is that you? I mean, don't you think I could, oh no. Don't you think I could dub over this entire look with like a Katie Jane Hughes inspired makeup tutorial voiceover and it would, it would work, like it's the same? I wasn't even thinking that, but it's very that. Okay, let's move on, goodness gracious. My friend Becca, who's so incredibly wonderful, I've been, Watching her Instagram grow for a while, she's just, just stunning. She just does such a good job. And she does like thorough reviews of things on Instagram in writing next to the posts. And she does beautiful swatches. I just love, I mean, I, I stan. And I also am inspired by and aspire to be like Becca on Instagram. And recently she started, or she started a YouTube channel not super recently, but you know, it's new. It's still a new channel. Recently, I started watching it and I was like, I love you even more. And then we got together. We ha we've gotten together a couple of times and she has, she's like, we've exchanged PR products that each of us isn't using, like with the other person. So these are some products that she had that she gave to me. The Rodial Liquid Blush Drops. And I also have this Cure Weiss Blush in the shade, I think, Blossoming, which Cure Weiss recently sent me, and I'm loving it so much. And Becca also gave me this product. It's the Nude Sticks Nudies Glow All Over Face Highlight Color in Ice Ice Baby. And I actually don't know. Wait a second. Oh, I was confused about what this was. When I first opened this, I just took this off and, I, and it was a brush. And I thought that it was a liquid highlighter that you had to twist the cap and it would come up. So sitting there twisting it, nothing was coming up through the brush. And I was like, I'm just going to wait and do this on camera and we can, I can twist it up and we can see it emerge together. And just now I pulled off the other side and it's actually a cream highlight with a brush to blend it out. So let's put the cream highlight on and see how it looks. It's very beautiful and I feel even more like Katie Jane Hughes now, but it feels sticky. It feels like, it feels sticky and it feels like it's not going to set. It feels a little bit like it's a very balmy, like a face gloss almost. And part of the reason that it is so shiny is that it's got that goopy, quality. So the jury is definitely still out on this. I don't tend to like that kind of thing, but it's undeniably very beautiful the way that it looks. Let's get some color in there. Here's what's going on with the Rodial drops. I'll put a little bit of one on my cheeks, but I just want to show you. So they seem like they're going to be really goopy. I talked about these recently in the video about all the makeup I wore over the past two or three weeks. They seem like they're going to be really like this, like thick and goopy. And then when you blend them out, they kind of sheer out and they end up looking very beautiful, like really, really e much easier to wear than you would think based on the way they look coming out of the dropper, especially when they're actually on the cheeks. I mean, they here, I put like thick swatches on. So there's a lot there. If I were to put one on, I think I would want to do the bronzy one, although I do really like this pinky one, but I think I would want to do the bronzy one because of what's going on on my eyes. So I'm going to do that. I'll put a little bit on just, you know, because this is what we're doing this video. We're doing the most. And then let's see how we're feeling after I put a little bit of this on. I'm putting it on the back of my hand first. Just look how it's like so thick and goopy. It really feels like it's going to be a lot. And then it's it's quite wearable. It's shocking. You 
Yeah, I really like that. I really like it. However, I don't think it dries down either. And I wanna build the color a little bit, but I don't wanna build more and more layers of something that's not gonna dry down on my face. So I'm gonna finish this look with the Cure Weiss blush because it sets a little bit better. I mean, it's creamy, but it doesn't kind of, I wanna get, I want like more color like that, like quite a lot of color. And I just don't want it to get so sticky. And this, you know, it's creamy, but it doesn't create that like face gloss layer. So it'll be easier to use to build intensity. Gosh, I really went overboard. Help. There's nothing around. I don't have like a washcloth or anything. I, I think that I just have to do it. We'll take it up here. I'm having flashbacks to how much blush is too much video. That's okay, right? I kind of saved it by spreading it all over my face. I feel like this is the best I've ever looked. Just putting it out there. But this is really calling into question my plan for the lips because I have these Cure Weiss lipsticks. I have been enjoying them so much, or the one. I've been enjoying the one that I've worn a bunch of times so much, and today I was planning to wear the other one. So this is the one that I've worn a lot. The shade is called Euphoria. It's like a slightly rusty cinnamony brown. It's very close to Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon, but not quite the same. It's close, but not the same. And then this is the, the one that I haven't worn yet. This shade is called Confidence. And it's just, ew, hmm. That actually might be closer to Velvet Dragon. No, Velvet Dragon's got that like depth, that like velvety depth. It's like that bright, it, this looks to me like Tom Ford Wild Ginger. I wonder if it is, I'm gonna get Wild Ginger and swatch it because I bet it's close. Okay, it's not exactly the same. Wild Ginger, Confidence, Euphoria. So Wild Ginger, it's just a little more orange, whereas Confidence from Cure Weiss is just a little bit more of that like pure pink kind of coming through, like just a little bit less rust, no rust. It's like Wild Ginger has a drop of rust in it and the Cure Weiss blush, the Cure Weiss lip has none, but they are very similar. And I think that we can say that this Cure Weiss blush is going to, in terms of color, it's going to occupy a position in my collection that has been left vacant by the retirement of Wild Ginger. Wild Ginger is my one piece of sentimental makeup that I've retained even though it's so old that I don't use it anymore. And I haven't gone looking for a replacement, but it seems like I, I kind of have one. I just feel like it would be too much to wear this today. Because the other thing that I have is that I have all of these e.l.f. lip glosses. e.l.f. sent me this um, like lip gloss holiday set, which I have already taken advantage of by giving a bunch of them away. It's so wonderful <laughs> to have like a set like this of lip glosses where it's just every time, like when I sent the things, people bought stuff from Poshmark and I like put a lip gloss in every package when I, I was like sending off the things that had sold on Poshmark. It's just so wonderful to be able to give as gifts, like little, and they're so good, these e.l.f. lip glosses. I feel like this look will probably look better with a gloss and I haven't tried this one yet and I've really been wanting to try it. Let's try it. It's called Love Bite. If I'm unsatisfied, we'll go for the lipstick. It's like brown, but and it has, it has the same color sparkles in it that, that are like in the multi-chrome. So it's really suiting the look. Color-wise, this is an undeniably strong finish to this look, but I actually feel like it's ended up doing the thing that I was worried about with the lipstick, which is that it's kind of making making me look over made up. I don't think that I, I don't think I want this to be it. It's not bad. When I watch the footage back, I'm probably gonna be like, Hannah, you should have left on the lip gloss, but I don't want it. I don't want it on. I, this isn't what I want. What about this? What This is an e.l.f. Gloss. This is the e.l.f. Plumping Lip Gloss in Peach Bellini. This is one of the other e.l.f. glosses that I've really been wanting to try. Oh my gosh. It's like a nude creme gloss. Well, that's very something. I can really feel it plumping my lips too. It's stinging, but I, I like it. I'm one of those people who likes it. I'm not mad at this, but I think we all know how this is gonna end. I'm gonna put on the lipstick. This is probably my favorite though, in terms of balancing the eyes and the cheeks with the rest of the face, like this is my favorite. I quite like this gloss and I, I can see myself using it, more, wearing it more and wearing it in other videos. It's not doing anything weird on my lips in like the cracks of my lips or anything. 
and yet it's giving me that lighter, like paler than my natural lip color finish. And I like that, but I'm putting on the lipstick, okay? Okay. Okay, this entire situation has gotten way out of control. This lipstick formula is pretty intense. I love it. It's very, very pigmented. And I like it because when I put it on and I have worn the other one, this one, Euphoria, I've worn it around the house just on regular days several times at this point because it's such a pop. I mean, it's such a punch of color and the pigment's so intense and I feel like it's gonna stay all day even if it wears off and I like eat and drink and even if I blot it and stuff like that, it's still going to have like a strong presence on the lips. So I really like the pigment and it also has a really stiff formula. It's not like melty and creamy. And that also makes me feel like I can control where I put it. So with this, you know, it's really for makeup artistry, a pretty stiff and very pigmented lipstick formula is great because it means I can work with it easily. I can manipulate it to do what I want it to do. It's not sliding out of control, but where I put it, it deposits a ton of pigment. So I'm a huge fan of this Kierweiss formula and of the brand overall. I'm hoping to do like a full brand review at some point actually of, of Kierweiss. The color, it is kind of serving me Tom Ford Wild Ginger. It's a, it's got, it's fluorescent. I, ho I hope it re fluorescent things don't tend to read on camera very well. In person, it has this like intense fluorescent quality. And Tom Ford Wild Ginger always had that. It was like on the edge between just a regular bright fire engine orangey red and like a fluorescent red. This I feel like is just a tick over the line into fluorescent, but I'm a big fan. I'm definitely be keeping both of these. Like I, these two colors of red are so, 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 so good for me. Kierweiss just came out with four new reds and these two I am keeping, I love, and the other two are also very beautiful, but I decided to give them as gifts because I didn't need four new red lipsticks. So I kept the two that are the most original for me and suit me the best and I gave the other two away. All four of them though are gorgeous. And here's what I have to say overall, I like trying new makeup on camera. I'm gonna do this again. I feel like I should do this more often. I'm kind of picky about the PR that I accept. So I, I'm i not someone who could like film trying new makeup like clockwork every week or something like a lot of people can because it's not as though there's just an endless stream of makeup coming into my life. But I could probably scrape it together to do it every couple of weeks, especially if I dip into, you know, some of the stuff that I've gotten for self-sponsored review. I could fill in the gaps with things that aren't new or things that are in purgatory for me that I'm trying to decide about, et cetera. I think I could probably get it together to do something like this every once in a while. And it's just... What fun to be able to sort of just experiment and be creative and, and try. I feel like I didn't just try new makeup, like new new products. I also tried a new style of makeup for myself. Like I tried a new technique with the winged liner. I, I was literally trying new makeup, which brings me to the last thing I wanna say about this, which is that I, I feel like trying new makeup, this kind of video, can generate sort of a consumerist frenzy in a viewer. Sometimes when I watch videos like this, I'm like clicking out of the video and adding stuff to my cart, adding stuff to my cart constantly because you see somebody trying all this new stuff and it's really exciting and maybe the look is really inspiring and you're like, I wanna look like that, I wanna do that, I need those products too. You don't, you don't need the exact products. You can figure out, you can try new makeup, like you can try the new makeup look that you're seeing me in using the makeup that you already own. Even if you don't have the exact thing, you can do an approximation. So for example, maybe you really loved seeing me apply this sort of burnt orange winged eyeliner, but you don't have a cream eyeliner in this color, but maybe you have an eyeshadow in this color and you could like wet your brush or use a little mixing medium or something and just experiment with trying to get a look like this and seeing how it looks on you, how it, feel, how it feels to create it play around with what you already own, and maybe that will scratch that itch. Or maybe playing around with what you already own will make you realize that you do actually want to buy the one from Lethal, but at least you'll be basing it on some experimentation that you've done in your own life. You'll be basing it on, act basing it on actual evidence of your own life rather than just watching me do it and immediately making a snap decision about spending your own money and buying something new without having kind of let it settle inside of yourself without having really thought it through. You know, we're, we're approaching the holiday season and 
this is a time of year when I think it, it can become very easy to just slide into that beautiful, that delicious feeling that all bets are off, that you get a pass because it's the holidays. And I think that it, it is okay to treat yourself a little bit. I mean, I usually, mm, the past couple of years I've done pretty well, but I, I plan to, you know what I mean? Like maybe allow myself to buy one nice thing that I wouldn't otherwise buy like during this season. I think that it's okay to do that a little bit, but I think that it's important to assess what you truly can afford to do in terms of indulging yourself and treating yourself in the holiday season and stop at that rather than starting all the way back here in October, early November, taking off the brakes and letting yourself buy absolutely everything that appeals to you. And if one of the things or some of the things that I showed today end up being one or some of the things that you end up buying, then that's great. I'm glad that I was able to show them to you, but it's not normal to have this much new makeup all at once. It's not normal for me. I'm just doing, I just have it and I'm just doing this because part of the work that I do is to do this kind of thing on YouTube and provide some entertainment for you. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. I really appreciate you for being here. I, I hope that this was fun and I really hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>